I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're gonna to be talking about 10 fun dating facts. It's hard to say that, we both tried it. <laughs> Try saying that three times. Yeah. Margaret's got uh, a fun little article that she wanted to share. And so we're gonna just jump right in. Margaret, what do you got today? Um, what I have is uh, 10 fun facts about dating and it's written by a woman named Nikki Nelson who writes for a sort of a dating website called Cheesecake. Okay. All right. I haven't heard of that one. No. Me either. I hadn't heard of it before. The phenomenon of dating as a whole seems to be a code that will never fully be cracked, but that doesn't mean that we haven't that we haven't done countless studies trying to figure out how to crack this code. Men may be from Mars and women may be from Venus, but the, at the end of the day, we're all humans and can be fairly predictable. That is why we have teamed up with dating blog, The Single Society, to scour the plethora of studies on sex, love, and dating. Okay. And bring you the most interesting findings. Here are 10 fascinating facts on love and dating, according to scientists and experts across the globe and hopefully it will shed some light upon why we as humans are the way we are. All right, let's see what they found. All right, the first one, you're gonna like this one. All right. The first one is the longer you spend dating somebody before marrying, the less likely the marriage is to end in divorce. So are they saying that you shouldn't marry somebody after three months? That's what they're saying. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what they're saying. Even though, you know, you're lonely and you've been waiting for somebody to come along and you're very excited, it doesn't work. No. All right? Not, not often. Yep. Emory University in 2014 did a study involving 3,151 people. That's a lot. Okay. And found that couples who had dated for three or more years before proposing were 40% less likely to divorce compared to those who had dated for less than one year. I mean, yeah. Okay. I mean, file that under obvious. <laughs> Except that, you know, when people feel like it's the one, it's the twin flame, it's this, it's that, it's sometimes very hard to slow down. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, a lot of that is, I think, because if you've had a lot of unmet needs and then Absolutely. somebody comes along, yeah. You're like, finally, someone's going to love me and treat me well and this and that. But attachment issues are going to come out. And they, I mean, yes, they come out in the first six months, but they really come out After. around that six month mark. Right. Okay. So, you know, you got to take your time getting to know somebody. If you marry somebody after being with them for three plus years, dating them first, you, you know, know what you're getting. Both of you know what you're getting. Yeah. You're, exactly. you're. You're not in for any big surprise. And some people... Likely. Have, I mean, it can happen. Yeah. <laughs> some people have annual cycles that you need to know about. And it has to be at least a year, you know, by the time you know that. They have may have difficulty on the anniversary of parents' deaths or anniversaries of bad things that have happened to them. Or I knew one woman who was very up and coming and bright and energetic, and she had married a guy who, had, who got depressed in the fall and was depressed until spring. You know, and she hadn't dated him long enough to know that. All right, so you got to know what you're getting into. Okay. It's a long-term commitment. All right. What was num what's number two? Number two, a woman's happiness is a key indicator of a successful relationship. A study at Rutgers School of Arts and Sciences found that overall marital quality was generally greater if women were content with their relationships 
whereas the happiness of men did not seem to affect marital quality as much. <laughs> I don't know. We had dinner, and it was okay, and then we went out, and we had a good time. Isn't that all there is? That's interesting, Margaret. Isn't it? Do you think that's because um, men to tend to be a little bit less... N not necessarily invested, but kind of like emo like aware of the connection. Yes, I do. And, and I think that um, sometimes men struggle with the commitment, but once they've made it, it sounds like they become sort of at home and comfortable fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. And women are much, I think women have much higher expectations. And I think they are just yeah. more emotionally attuned right. to exactly. the connection and the relationship. Yes. And guys, it's okay to be emotionally attuned. It doesn't mean... You're like a girl, as a guy told me recently. You yeah. Know? No, it's very helpful to be emotionally very in tune to your partner. To be emotionally in tune. But, yeah. you know, maybe part of that is biological, too, because yeah. women are so emotionally attuned to having a baby. Having, and and ha being emotionally attuned to them. Yes. That's yeah. Right. So I think maybe that's why maybe they have more understanding of how to do it, or maybe it's socialization as well. And, you know, you hear many, many cases, and oftentimes I hear them from men. I had no idea she'd be upset if I went to a three-week softball tournament in, in another state, mm -hmm. you know? Well, didn't it occur to you that she'd miss you? Well, a little, you know. And I think... But we men, gotta win! Yeah, 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 but we... <laughs> that's right. And I think oftentimes don't, men don't mean to be insensitive, but I think they can be. But I think it's an interesting... If the woman's happy, everybody's gonna be happy. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right, number three. Number three. No correlation has been found between astrological sign and compatibility. I think half the people just shut off the video. Okay, Cupid. But he's a Capricorn. Yep. Okay, Cupid gathered information from over 500,000 of their users' profiles to... 500,000. Yep. Uh, of their user profiles to determine once and for all whether there was a single correlation between compatibility and star sign. The results, question mark, astrology is a complete bull. I'll let you finish the word. <laughs> That's in the article. Yes. Now listen, you know, Margaret, I'm very open-minded. And if people want to believe that, that's fine. Yeah. Maybe, maybe there's some truth to it that we don't know about. Who but knows? As they say, don't bet the farm on it. Yeah. yeah. But I would tell you, I think you're going to find a lot more success understanding attachment theory. Yeah. And, fi and learning somebody's attachment style than you will if they're a Capricorn But there are some people Libra. who will never be convinced of that. Yeah. And, you know, I look at news on the computer every day, and there's always an article on compatibility mm. and star signs. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, you could spend your life being entertained by it, whether you believe it or not. Yeah. All right. I love the next one. Wearing red can make people more attracted to you. Hang on, I'll be right back. I'm okay. going to change shirts. All right. <laughs> you got to get your red shirt? Yeah. Well, good. Uh, I should have brought, brought mine. All right. A 208 study by the American Psychological Association found that men rated women wearing red as more attractive, associating the color with sex. A separate 210 study by the same association found women to associate the color red with power and status. Hmm. So we should all wear red all the time, apparently. Apparently. Yep. From here on out, that's all I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> should I get a red jacket? But of course, some of us are so attractive. The color doesn't make any difference, yeah. right, Craig? You have to fight them off anyway. Exactly. Wear, yeah. We can't have it too much, Margaret. No. Men are usually the first ones to say, I love you, mm -hmm. okay? A 211 study by the American Psychological Association involving participants aged from 18 to 69 mm -hmm. found that the participating males were more than twice as likely as females to confess their love to their partner. Mm -hmm. I've heard that to be true, have you? Mm, you know, I'd have to think about that yeah. one. I mean, I wouldn't disagree. Yeah, um, yeah probably. Yeah. But, Margaret, how often is it they're saying it just to, you know... You don't think they might have... You don't think they a might have agenda. a hidden agenda that had anything to do with sex, do you think? I would say that in many cases they probably are. We don't, you know, we don't mean to say that men aren't sincere. Um, but sometimes... And I think they can genuinely get carried away. Mm -hmm. um, 
All right. Number six. Remarriage is becoming more popular. Mm -hmm. In 2013, 23% of married people had been divorced at least once before. Mm -hmm. Okay? Whereas in 1960, it was only 13%. So people are remarrying more often than they used to, and that's great. Yeah, I think want. it's just a lot more accepted. Yeah, it's a lot more accepted now, yeah. yeah. Um, that you don't have to stay with one person, particularly if one of you or both of you is a bit unhappy. Yeah. Okay. People might try to tell you that long-distance relationships can't and won't work, but the research out there says otherwise. And I, you see a lot of stuff about that. Interesting. Some saying that, you know, long-term long-distance relationships never work anyway. In fact, according to one study published in the Journal of Communication, that must be an interesting publication, not only are long-distance relationships just as successful as regular ones, but they are also more effective in building trust and satisfaction between partners. Hmm. But if you have a long-distance relationship with somebody you don't trust, that's certainly going to be a disaster. Yeah. But if you do trust them, you know, maybe in this case, absence does make the heart grow fonder. Well, I think it's also a lot more difficult to catfish people than it was, say, 10, 15 years ago, right. where the internet was like you didn't have a web camera, and every now everybody's got a phone that you could pick them and do a FaceTime. If they're not going to do a FaceTime with you so you can see them live, right. you're going you're gonna to be like, okay, this is suspicious. Whereas 10, 15 years right. ago, they could hide it a lot longer. Yep. Yeah, it's hard to hide much these days. Yeah. Okay. Number eight. Being in love cuts headache frequency in half. All right. When researchers at the Stanford University School of Medicine gave subjects with chronic headaches a nasal spray with a dose of oxytocin um, or the love hormone mm -hmm. in it, they found that 50% of participants reported their head pain to be cut in half after four hours, with an mm. additional 27% reporting no pain at all in the same time frame. Now, I have maintained for years there must be medical applications of oxytocin, mm -hmm. and here's one. Wow. Okay, so if you feel like you're warmly attached and so forth and so on, oxytocin will make you feel just wonderful. Mm -hmm. Like everything's okay. All right. Yeah. So I'm sure there are many other um, ways that we will find to use oxytocin. All right. Number nine. Number nine. People find love in the most unexpected of places. One survey of more than 5,000 travelers conducted by HSBC. I don't know who they are. Do you? No. Nope. HSBC. Um, found that approximately one in every 50 travelers has met their soulmate on board a plane. That seems really high. Two, okay. Two out of a hundred? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute now, is that right? One out of every 50 travelers. One out of every 5,000 travelers. Oh, no, <laughs> wait, wait. No, 5,000 were conducted in the okay. survey. One in every 50 travelers. One in every 50 travelers. So that yeah. means two out of every hundred, if you yeah. double it up. Yep. Yeah. So you got a hundred people on a plane, the two people that are talking have just found love. Just found love. Don't interrupt them. <laughs> now, I worked with someone who had met the love of her life on a plane. Mm -hmm. And it was a rather sweet love story when you heard it. Mm -hmm. So I certainly have seen firsthand that it does happen. Okay. Yeah. And um, the last one. Being in love saves you money on trips to the doctor. Okay? Mm-hmm. When the Health and Human Services Department, now that's federal, this is serious business. When the Health and Human Services Department analyzed studies that compared marriage and health, one of the shocking things they found was that married people reported few, fewer than usual doctor visits and shorter hospital stays. Okay. All right. The best logic for all, for all this is that human beings have been crafted by evolution to live in closely knit, knit social supports. And I've heard that before. They always say about the elderly that they tend to live longer. You tend to live longer if you're married or, or ha happily partnered or whatever. All right. So if you're alone, the stresses and strains are worse. Okay. All right. So that was a good article. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I thought it was a little lighter than some of it, but it was all true. 
Yeah, yeah. it was interesting stuff. So L being in love is good for your health. <laughs> Let us know what you thought about the article in the comments. And of course, if you want to get our help personally, go to my website, askcraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. And of course, Margaret is available for Skype coaching. If you feel that I can be helpful, please sign up. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. To get my help personally, go to askcraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.